You ready? Okay, here we go. Yep. So five, four, three, two, and one. Our folks, welcome back to the podcast. Very excited to have back Doreen Hills. Doreen, welcome back. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. So Doreen, as you will recall, is the founder, director at the Center for Healing Trauma and Attachment. Their mission is to provide cutting edge treatment approaches in healing traumatic distress. They're also committed to finding ways to provide quality and affordable therapy and to be the pioneer in healing in the trauma, healing trauma in the Northeast region. Doreen has been a mental health provider for over 20 years and has worked in various mental health settings in New York, Philippines, and Colorado. Her background includes intense and immersed experiences working with poverty-stricken fishermen in the Philippines, orphans that were severely neglected and abandoned, as well as Muslims in Manila. Doreen has conducted and facilitated trainings, workshops, and presentations in Morgan County, enabling Northeast counties in Colorado on topics of attachment, trauma, neuroscience, among others. Today, we're continuing our discussion with the assessment of children. All right, Doreen. So for those listeners maybe who haven't uh, listened before, just remind them where you're from originally and where you are currently. I'm originally, my roots are from, you know, I came from the Philippines. Um, I received my bachelor's degree there and I transplanted in in uh, New York and then moved to Colorado. And I've been here, I've been in Colorado since 2006 and I was a private practitioner and I still have my private practice and developed the trauma center. So in a previous uh interview we we touched upon uh doing an assessment with uh children and what what age are we talking between what and what age yes so i can say toddler five let's let's do five years old let's do five five and onwards yeah okay so let's if we if we can here kind of summarize give us kind of a, a a the nutshell uh, maybe of what we talked about before or an introductory nutshell, and then we'll get more specific about our topic today. Yes, sure. So I, we, we talked about the trauma-informed assessment with grownups, with, with adults, and I really wanted to dig into the trauma-informed assessment with children, which is, you know, which is very important for us clinicians to, to understand and to know. So I wanted to just review the four pillars of what is trauma-informed care? You know, first is realizing that, you know, adversities can happen to each and every one of us, including children. Um, recognizing the signs, recognizing the trauma triggers, as well as, you know, their stories, their strengths. So we can, you know, we can use that as a way to move them into the post-traumatic growth. Pretty important there. And then the third R stands for um, resisting, um, actually, I'm sorry, responding, responding uh, healthily in, you know, working with with people. So being able to be aware of where you're at as a clinician, being able to know what traumatic stress is and all that, you know, all that knowledge information so you can educate clients. And the third one, uh, and the fourth one is actually for us, how do we resist? Because we work with when we work with a lot of traumatized people, what do we do to resist revict well, revictimization for them and also resisting um secondary trauma for us? So just to kind of you know summarize the four pillars of trauma-informed care, realizing, responding, um, actually realizing, recognizing, responding, and resisting. So those are usually that's the, you know that's usually what I utilize and that's my foundation when I work with individuals experiencing trauma and even with kids. Okay. So with that as a kind of foundation here, you know, doing an assessment with kids, as we as we all know, is can be really, really challenging. So oh, yeah. what, how do you even approach this? Um, you, you know, I always believe we, we cannot pick and choose, right? Especially in the Northeast area, we cannot pick and choose who we work with. 
You know, when people need help, we we really need to understand what we're doing. We need to get, you know, to get trainings as much as possible. And so with kids, is what you say, there is beauty, there's beauty, there's fun. There's also challenge working with kids. It's the same, you know, it may not be the same, but it's there's challenge working with adults as well. Um, I just wanted to, you know, I, I've worked with, the youngest that I work with is actually three years old. Um, but we're let's just use the, you know, let's use the five-year-old as, um, you know, as a, uh, as a, or as a template here. So when I work with little kids, and I'm talking about toddlers and even children, you know, um, school age children to middle school to teen, it is so important to always bring these four components in trauma informed assessment, moving towards, you know, uh, doing your, your, um, your ongoing therapy. There's the two C's and the two P's. The first two C's is being creative. Clinicians, you got to, you know, you've got to look at things outside the box when working with kids. You know, being creative in in the session and what what would that look like? Utilizing play, utilizing toys, art, utilizing movement as a way to connect with them. And then curiosity is kids are you know, naturally, kids are naturally born curious. So you've got to be attuned to that. You know, what are they curious about? What are you curious about them? Mm -hmm. And I think it is important for us to be, now we're moving into the two Ps, which is being playful. And I'm talking about starting, you know, the first session with them, utilizing playfulness, utilizing color, sounds, music, and just sitting with them, you know, in the therapy session and using games as, as assessment tools. And the last, and, and the, the last, or the, the next P that I have is planning. Mm -hmm. So pretty crucial here because oftentimes when we, you know, we get comfortable and we just, yeah, okay, here's the, the assessment. This is what's going on you know, with the kids or with the adults that we work with, okay, we'll just see, you know, we assume that they're going to sit down and everything's going to be, you know, talk therapy. Mm -hmm. When I mean planning, and again, intentional planning, I, on my assessment, I ask them, what do they like to do? What are the things that they enjoy? And so when I, when I review the assessment, I already have a little glimpse of, what kind of what kind of gadgets, what kind of toys, what kind of, you know, um, atmosphere can I, you know, can I have in, you know, my preparation? Can I can I use when I see this child? So, for example, I've worked with this with this five year old. And she loves from you know from from my um like you know the the assessment the intake she loves to play play doh she likes play doh she likes games she likes music and so i weave those activities in assessment and when you do that you got their connection cuz remember <laughs> It's not only adults that can fire us, even kids do. And that may, <laughs> oh, go ahead. If I just may interject for one second. Yeah. So just to bring this back. It's for a, a lot second. of information, right? It's a lot of information, but you have, a, you have a really great way of distilling a lot of information into easily digestible nuggets here. So, but this is a trauma-informed assessment. Are we talking about a, a basic assessment of a young kid that's trauma informed, or and or are we talking about maybe you've suspected trauma, and you're doing an assessment? So I don't know if this will answer your question. So we, we in our center, we already have the strong assumption that whoever comes in our door have trauma okay. and. 
um, you know, oftentimes the intake or even the referral, the very, the very, very early phase is, you know, let's say my kiddo, you know, usually parents or guardians, you know, we would like to see you or we, you know, we would like to get in because, you know, there's behaviors going on and there was a significant trauma. They, they're probably exposed to domestic violence in the last couple months or, you know, parents or somebody they love died. Um, so, we already have the idea that, okay, something traumatic or even distressing happened to this little person. Okay. And so, and usually 100% confirmed by, you know, by the, the guardian's reports, you know, through intake that they complete before, you know, before I see the child. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that explanation. All right. So continue. You were working with this kid. Yes. So, you know, when I... I work with this, with this, um, with this five-year-old and, you know, again, the intake, I do have, I created my own intake. I included there, what are the things that they love to do, that they enjoy, that they feel, you know, that they feel connected or having fun. And so I already have those ideas. And what I do is when I, before I see the child, when I get those information, when I have a little bit of those information, you know, I... I actually tailor my room that way. So it's intentional, you know, when they come in, most of the things that they love to do are already there. I've got all kinds of Play-Dohs. I've got the smelly Play-Dohs. I've got the glitter Play-Dohs, <laughs> you know, and she likes to move. And so I have the butterfly, you know, like the butterfly, you can get a Dollar Tree you know, butterfly costume. And I weave those when I'm getting to know the child. Okay. Now, what do you, let the, if we can, can we continue with this kid here? What are you looking for? You've set the stage, you set the room beforehand. You, mm -hmm. you've, you've learned and listened to this kid to find out what they like to do. What are you looking for? And what did you see when you were working with this kid? Mm-hmm. Two things, um, two things that I, I always pay attention to is how do they regulate when, you know, when they're with another person. And again, oftentimes we, well, we know that someone experienced trauma or PTSD because of the disruption of trust. And so I pay attention to how, how, regulated or how dysregulated are they when they come and see me? You know, are they just bouncing off the wall? Are they, or even we can even call it energy, right? I use the word energy. Um, are they bouncing off the wall? Are they disconnected? Are they checking out? Are they slumped, slouched? Mm -hmm. And so I pay attention to those. And in fact, my first set, my first um, intake and assessment with kids is I want to find out how, how is your energy right now? That is my word. That's, you know, how, en how is your energy right now? And even a five-year-old can understand that. Mm -hmm. Are you like here to where you just feel like you're bouncing off the wall? Are you in the middle to where I'm chillax? I'm good. I can hear Miss Doreen. Or are you feeling like, oh, I'm tired. I'm bored. And kids get that. And they'll say, well, I'm here right now. I'm really high right now. And so we already, in the very beginning, we already start to teach them regulation. So you would use that information in what way? I need to understand how... Well, I don't know if I, if I, let me know if I answered your question. So I, I need to understand their ability to stay in that window of tolerance. You know, and, and I think I wanted to understand their stress response. Is this child in a flight mode, in a fight mode, in a fawning mode, in a submission mode? And so these informations, you know, this information will guide me to, you know, for, for, um, to understand, to construct what, you know, understand this person, what am I seeing 
and not necessarily what they're saying to me. What am mm. I seeing here? And this may take, and I know this can be quite challenging, um, especially when we deal with uh, insurance companies, because oftentimes we um, we only are given um, one time intake assessment, right? And, and so it's we're limited. So. So if um you know so if I have to continue my assessment the next session, you know I weave in therapy there and also still getting to know them, because oftentimes I usually it takes me between three to five sessions to really get a good idea of you know of where the child is, how they've been impacted by the specific trauma and so yes. forth. Um. So. I'd like to get specific here, and can we can we use this kid as an example here? How did things unfold with this kid, this five year old? What did you sure. see? So again, I used the I used the three the four things that I've shared with with you guys: creativity, curious, curiosity, playing, and planning. And over time, I mean, on those, you know, those three, you know, three to five session window, I was able to, you know, I wanted to point so many things here. Um, when I work with kids, so let's say start with, with you know, just the, that five-year-old, I already asked this child, do you know why you are coming to see me? And I introduced myself because kids understand sometimes counseling can be you know, or counselor or therapist can be a really huge, you know, word for them. I use the word helper. Mm. You know, Miss Doreen is here to help you with your feelings or being able to help you control your emotions or, you know, being able to, um, you know, to, to um, share something that's been bugging you, something like that. Very simple and very clear. And so even a younger child can really understand as long as you're clear, as long as you ask them, you know, really clear question, like, do you know why, you know, why your mom or your dad or your grandma, you know, are coming, you know, are, are, you know, having you see me. And most of the time in this case, with this top, with this five-year-old, yes, I do. And then the two of us, you know, talk about, okay, you're coming. I'll just give you an example. You know, we talk about, well, I'm having bad dreams. Just an example. I'm having bad dreams. Can you help me with my bad dreams? Or there's a monster, you know, monster in my closet. Mm -hmm. And so you're already identifying the goals. You're already identifying. So would you, so you wanted me to work with you on, the monsters and the nightmares and all that stuff, or even, you know, I'm afraid to see such and such person. And so, okay, well, we can work on what are, what do you think about these, you know, what do you think about these options? You know, maybe we can make this, you know, make this nightmares or bad dreams, just, you know, go down a little bit and kids love visual. <laughs> So you're gonna pay attention, and usually, sometimes there's a lot of goals, right? Just limit it to one to two or one to three. So kids know, okay, I know why you're coming to see me, or I I know why I'm why why I'm coming to see you. So in that first session or in that intake, they know why they're going to therapy. Don't make it, don't prolong it, because sometimes, you know, we kind of just get okay. We assume that the child knows why they're coming and it's bring it out in the open. And that's part of trauma informed, you know, trauma informed lens be, you know, be transparent and let them know exactly like I'm here to help you on such and such and such and such. And Initially, you're coming here because of these reasons. Initially you talked about uh, one of the words you used was revictimization. Um, so you're saying to bring it out in the open. Bring it out. You know, this is this is what happened, or ask them what to talk about. Are you saying to ask them to talk about what happened, or to share what I, happened? Well, I I don't in the you know I don't in the early you know in the intake. 
but I give them that space to where, you know, let's say it's open, right? Like, yeah, something bad happened to me. So let's say child, yeah, something really bad happened to me. And I would encourage them when you are ready, when you you are ready, you're feeling so ready and you feel like you are safe and just comfortable here, you have the whole space to talk about this when you're ready. And it gives them, you know, sometimes, sometimes, and I think this is very tricky, sometimes kids are there to please people. Mm. And so I give them space to where whenever you're ready, when the time comes that you feel safe, that you feel comfortable with Miss Doreen, then we can talk about this. But right now, what do you like to do? So you're giving, you know, it's it's kind of like in the back of their mind. Okay, at one point we will talk about it, but not right now. Giving you're, you're them giving that them the, the 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 control in a sense. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I think even with grown ups, kind of like you know, they have this this idea and therapy. Like, okay, I'm gonna sit down right now and I'm going to tell you everything. Okay. And next thing you know, you know, I don't want to see that person again because it's flooding me right. because it's too much right. we've got to give them opportunity and space to where when the time comes you and i can figure out you know a time to visit about this and it doesn't have to be all of it so giving them that you know that ability to okay this is my choice i can say when i'm you know i can speak up speak this up when i'm ready just remind everyone, I'm speaking with Doreen Hills. She is the founder director at the Center for Healing Trauma and Attachment. We're talking about um, trauma-informed assessment for kids. So this is really fascinating to me. And I mean, just thinking about kids and trauma is just so friggin' sad. It's just, you know, I, I think it's easy. You know, we talk about all this stuff and yet it's it's very easy to, you don't, know, we don't want, I don't like thinking about it. You know, no one likes thinking about kids being harmed, but yet it's, it's amazing that there are people like you who, who are helping these kids. So obviously you, we're talking about a five-year-old who doesn't necessarily has a limited verbal capacity to express what's going on. What is healing look like in a young kid like this? And I know it's going to be different for each kid, but right. What is how do you approach that a response to that? What does healing look like for a young kid like this? How do you know when the kid is quote unquote healed or getting better or getting better? Well, kids usually again that age, you know, the toddler, the toddler world, you know, they have it's difficult to articulate, right? it's difficult to articulate what's going on inside and you know just saying it out loud is so we we have to use different kinds of play therapy santra and all that cool stuff but how do we know it's usually seen through their behaviors and i've worked very you know short term with this kid and and of course it is important to have a collaborative relationship with the parents that's that's part of that's part of treatment. Um, I ask them. I have parents meet and ask them what are the things that are going well for this child and what are the things that needs improvement. And so over time, I work with this individual for about six months, and she her um, she's no longer you know aggressive. And I even asked her so you know like with, let's say nightmares gone and you can see it you can even see it in the play in the play session because this you know this individual did centre and she was able to articulate again you know articulate through the play that it's over it's gone mm -hmm. and here's the last one the parents are happy mm -hmm. <laughs> you know the parents are happy and they will tell you you know that the child is progressing like we're satisfied with the growth and, you know, the the behavior, the progress in behavior. And usually it's the behavior that's going to speak 
about mm-hmm. the child's progress. Mm-hmm. So it's it's your perspective, it's the parents' perspective, it's the kids' behaviors and actions and, and even words sometimes. Yes. Coming from all wow. Every, you know, and, and again, it's that embodied approach of you work not only, and that's I think that's where sometimes people don't, you know, um don't get into the kids' work because it's challenging and there's a lot of work because there's a lot of collaboration, a lot of you know, people can be involved. And again, the bottom line is when you connect with, with the, you know, with the other people, like the grownups, you talk to the child and ask the child and let the child know why you need to visit with her mom and her dad, her teachers. So they are in, in every way, every, you know, in the beginning, they are part of the team. Mm-hmm. first and foremost and it doesn't matter you know sometimes people say well they're not 12 years old yet or they're not 18 yet to where they can consent i don't care that's that's the child's you know this is the child's world this is the child's therapy they need to be part of it mm-hmm. no matter what <laughs> that's awesome Doreen, we could i could talk so much longer but oh, there's we're, we're, so much here winding down here um, you have some trainings coming up at the center. Uh, you want to briefly tell us about those and how people can learn about those? Yes. So I'm actually going to be doing a conference in Lakewood, Colorado. It is uh, complex trauma and supporting parents, supporting parents with complex trauma. I hope, you know, people, listeners would hear this because I can do a training on Zoom. And then I am actually going to do training um, international this coming th- next Friday with uh, the Philippines team. And I'm going to be doing training on ancestral trauma. Wow. And then on April 26, again, we can do it via Zoom. Um, I'm doing a training with um, on complex trauma intersecting with community violence. So a lot of stuff going on, and I just hope that, you know, listeners can reach out to us and we can do, you know, we can do trainings all over the world, really. Okay. And how do people reach out to you? What's the best way? Yes, they can um, reach out to the website, chtainc.org. Um, they can also email me at green at kataink.org. Okay. We'll have those linked up at the show notes page here at the trauma diverse podcast.com. Doreen, always inspiring talking to you. Um, and we'll talk again. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Right. Bye bye.